What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to He Who Fights With Monsters, Book 2 by Chertaloon. We're on Chapter 67, and we're on the couch this time. You have friends to help you. In the ritual room, the group watched as Sophie continued through her awakening rituals. She had three unawakened abilities left, one from the Wind Essence and two from the Balance Essence, along with three legendary Awakening Stones to use on them. She decided to save the Reaper Stone for last, leaving the Awakening Stone of the Celestials that Constance, that Constance had suggested and the Stone of Karma that Clive had picked out. She started with the Stone of the Celestials. You have awakened the Wind Essence ability, Child of the Celestial Wind. You have awakened five of five Wind Essence abilities. You have awakened all Wind Essence abilities. Linked attribute Power will advance in conjunction with lowest ranked Wind Essence ability. Ability. Child of the Celestial Wind. Wind Essence. Special Ability. Dimension. Holy. Cost. None. Cooldown. None. Current rank. Iron. Zero. Zero percent. Effect. Iron. Your cell... Your Celestine Racial Powers have an increased effect. You gain damage reduction to Disruptive Force Damage. What are the Celestine Racial Powers? Neil asked. I know you have Utility Power Aptitude and can use ongoing abilities for less mana. That one's your ability that evolved, right? Yeah, Sophie said. We also recover mana more quickly and we're faster and have more Astral and Holy Affinities. What does Holy do other than improve Holy abilities, Neil asked. It increases the effect of healing magic and Holy boons used on me. Oh, that's useful, Neil said. Those are abilities you want to have increased. They move to the Awakening Stone of Karma. You have awakened the Balance Essence ability, Karmic Warrior. You have awakened four or five Balance Essence abilities. Ability, Karmic Warrior, Balance. Special ability, Holy. Cost, none. Cooldown, none. Current rank, iron, zero, zero percent. Effect, iron. Gain an instance of Agent of Karma when subjected to damage or any harmful effect, even if the damage and or effect was wholly negated. Agent of Karma. Boon, holy, stacking. The power and spirit attributes are temporarily increased by a small amount. Additional instances have a cumulative effect. So basically, Jason said, Whenever you take damage, even when you negate that damage with your, with your cheesy powers, you get stronger, tougher, and your magical abilities get stronger and more powerful. The spirit attribute actually has several functions, Clive said. Obviously, affecting the potency of essence abilities is the important one, but don't overlook its impact on your perception. As your spirit ability continues to move past bronze rank, our, your senses will go beyond what they are now. Colors, sounds, and smells to which we were oblivious will suddenly be made plain to us. So you can move fast and it amounts to stopping time, becoming immune to damage, then heap up all the damage you should have taken on the other guy, Jason said. Now you have another overpowered ability. Humphrey got bloody immortality and I got stretchy arms? Not even arms. One stretchy arm. You can switch up which arm it is, though, Belinda said. There's that. The group laughed at the flat look Jason gave her. We might be a little more sympathetic, Neil said. If your powers hadn't killed a carnivorous plant the size of a small city. It wasn't just me, Jason said. There were 25 other people involved in that. A Sarno, we would have been all left sitting around with nothing to do if you hadn't been there, Sophie said. Stop whining. I guess that's fair, Jason conceded. Sophie, that... Sophie, that new ability makes you rather like a defensive version of Jason, Humphrey pointed out. You don't have any explosive attack powers, but now the longer the fight goes on, the more dangerous you become. Increasing your power attribute will obviously increase your physical strength, and the increase in spirit will affect the additional damage your powers add to even your normal attacks. That will eventually add up until every one of your strikes will have the kind of strength the rest of us only have with a special attack we all know how quickly you can attack. We still have one more ability to awaken, Clive reminded them as he finished setting up for the final ritual. Did you hear what people were getting from the Reaper Stones while you were in the market, Jason asked. Clive veered off quite early to go ask around 
while the rest of us were selling the loot, Neil said. Did you actually get people to tell you, Clive? Kind of, Clive said. I found the Magic Society contingent and organized cheap awakening rituals for anyone who let us record their abilities. I saw that, Neil said. You organized that? I'm still a Magic Society official, Clive said. Even if Lucian Lamprey did effectively strip me of all responsibility. I'd like to kick that guy's insides out once today. I'd like to kick that guy's insides out once day. What? That's the exact way it's worded. I'd like to kick that guy's insides out once day. I'd like to kick that guy's insides out one day, Sophie said. Was this because of me, Jason asked unhappily. He doesn't like that I work with you, Clev said. It worked out, though, since it left me freer for adventuring and research. All his punishment actually did was free me from a bunch of administration duties. Jason frowned, knowing that it had not been the, the windfall Clive was making it out. I'm sorry, he said. I told you it's fine, Clive said. Getting back on topic, I did manage to find out about a lot of powers coming from the Reaper Stones. The most common, from what I could gather, are aggressive utility powers, Clive said as he continued to work. There's quite a lot of conjuration powers, mostly weapons, but also stranger things like Jason's arm conjuration. They also seem... They all seem to incorporate offensive aspects, although like the affliction Jason's shadow arm delivers. I'd like something impactful that I can open up a fight with, Sophie said. Something to put the enemy on the back foot. I'm not sure that's on the table, Clive said. From the people I talk to, the Reaper Stones tend to give out powers more in Jason's wheelhouse. Slow inevitable death. Speculation turned into anticipation as Clive finished the ritual and carried it out. You have awakened the Balance Essence ability, Deny the Reaper. You have awakened five of five Balance Essence abilities. You have awakened all Balance Essence abilities. Linked Attribute Recovery will advance in conjunction with the lowest ranked Balance Essence ability. Ability, Deny the Reaper. Balance, Special Attack, Counter Execute, Healing, Cost, Moderate Mana, Cooldown, 30 seconds. Current rank, Iron 0, 0%. Effect Iron. Target, in target enemy suffers a small amount of transcendent damage, and you are healed for a small amount. As a counter-execute effect, the damage and healing scale exponentially with your own level of injury. Counter-execute, Jason said. That's a new one to me. You generally see it in defensive power sets, Clive said. They are generally more powerful than other abilities, but only if you use them when things are going badly. Usually, they have some combination of damage reduction, healing, retribution damage, or health drain. My immortality power is something of a false counter-execute, Humphrey said. It's unlikely to scale well as Sophie's new power does, but it can also scale off low stamina and mana and will be mo more useful without having to be beaten down first. I thought that ability scaled, li scaled like this one, Neil said. Yes, but it doesn't have to be with damage, Humphrey said. If I'm just low on mana, for example, it'll top off my mana without doing much for my health or stamina. So it's more versatile, Jason said. Stupid OP power. I bet your mom's happy, though. Actually, she was ecstatic, Humphrey said. I've never seen her like that. Of course she was, Jason said. A mother just found out her child was immortal. I'm not actually immortal. It's still a powerful survival skill, Clive said. This one of Sophie's is not to be underestimated, however. The chance to bring a fight badly back to even ground fits the classic Balance Essence mode. Balance is quite popular because it has abilities like this that can pull you through rough situations. I wanted an attack for the start of a fight, not the end, Sophie said. Look at it this way, Humphrey said. Would you prefer a big, splashy entrance that may or may not do you any good, or something you can rely on when things go wrong? Sophie considered Humphrey's words, nodding to herself. I guess you're right, she said. Big attacks are kind of your area anyways. Plus, transcendent damage, Clive said. That's as reliable as it gets. Plus, incredibly rare at iron rank. You only see it on, con on conditional powers, like executes, or when the damage is negligible, both of which are demonstrated by Jason's abilities. That leaves you, Sophie said, turning to Belinda. Ready to become an essence user? Are you kidding? Belinda asked. I can't wait for Jason to complain about how many great powers I have. What? Jason asked. You can be a bit of a whiner, Neil told him. I'm not a whiner, Jason said. 
I'm just open with my feelings. I'm a delicate flower. The kind of flower that's hard to eradicate even when you're trying to get rid of it, Neil said. Is there a word for that? Are you calling me a weed? Jason asked. That's very rude. You said I was fat. You're objectively hefty for an elf. I'm well built. Like a fancy cake, Jason said. But I imagine you know all about cake, given how many you must have eaten to get like that. I'm not the only elf that looks like this, you know. You mean Lucian Lamprey? He's not a great role model, even putting aside the whole evil sleaze bag thing. The guy looks like someone sucked the air out of a bag of nuts. As Jason and Neil continued to bicker, Clive went to work setting up Belinda's first essence ritual. It was more elaborate and involved than the ritual of an awakening stone, but otherwise quite similar. Soon Belinda was standing in the middle of a magic diagram, a magic essence held nervously in her hands. There's nothing to worry about, Sophie said. You saw me go through this. Trust me, Clive said. I've done this dozens of times, probably hundreds. What if I get a crap power, Belinda said. My mother says there's no such thing as a bad power, Humphrey said. Just a bad essence user who doesn't know what to do with it. Everyone here knows how smart and resourceful you are, Jason told her. If you get a basic attack ability, that's a reliable power you can count on when things are too hectic to set up a clever plan. If you get something more esoteric, you can be innovative with it and really show what you're capable of. Either way, I know you'll be able to make the most of it. Belinda nodded. Thanks, she told them. If all of your powers are crap, though, Jason added casually, we're not letting you on the team. He yelped as, so as Sophie thumped him on the arm. What was that for, he asked. What was that for? What was that for, Sophie echoed incredulously. If I had a suppression collar... I'd put it on you and throw you off the highest tower of this whole damn palace. I'm kind of in the middle of something here, Belinda interjected. Sorry, Jason said. Clive conducted the ritual, the essence in Belinda's hands dissolving into a nebula-like cloud that floated around her before drifting gently into her body. You have absorbed magic essence. You have absorbed one of four essences. Progress to iron rank, 25%. One of four essences. Magic Essence has bonded to your spirit attribute, changing your spirit from normal to iron zero. Master all Magic Essence abilities to increase your spirit attribute. You have awakened the Magic Essence ability, Bag of Tricks. You have awakened one of five Magic Essence abilities. Ability, Bag of Tricks, Magic. Special Ability, Dimension. Cost, none. Cooldown, none. Current rank, iron zero, zero percent. Effect, iron. You have a personal dimensional storage space. You may equip any item from your storage space directly onto your person, or unequip anything on your person directly to your storage space. A dimensional space is your first ability, Neil said. Not even from some high-end stone. You got it straight from the essence. Looks like a convenient one, too. None of this conjuring up a cardboard, a cupboard, or whatever. We have a lot of storage spaces in this team, Clive said. We're lucky in that regard. Blue-gray light started shining from within Belinda. Here we go, Clive said. Human racial ability, Essence Gift, has evolved into Adventurer's Tools. Ability, Adventurer's Tools. Transfigured from Human Ability, Essence Gift. Active Ability, Conjuration. Conjure basic, non-magical objects. Sophie and Belinda had already decided to just do Belinda's essences before taking their shopping trip to sell off their loot in a market not flooded with essences and awakening stones. They already had some stones picked out, but were also waiting to see what her first powers produce. Normally, they would have only awakened around half of her powers right away, as had been the case with the rest of the team. Belinda was already behind the curve compared to them, though, so instead they decided to just do all of their stones after coming back from their shopping trip. In the meantime, they moved on to the next essence. You have absorbed Trap Essence. You have absorbed two of four essences. Progress to iron rank, 50%. Two of four essences. Trap essence has bonded to your power attribute, changing your power from normal to iron zero. Master all trap essence abilities to increase your power attribute. You have awakened the trap essence ability, bait and switch. You have awakened one of five trap essence abilities. Ability, bait and switch, trap. Special ability, dimension, illusion. Cost, high mana. Cooldown, 1 minute. Current rank, iron 0, 0%. Effect, iron. Teleport self or nearby ally 
to a nearby location. The subject is rendered invisible for a brief period, having leaving behind a lifelike illusion. The illusion has no substance or aura. An escape power, Clive said. The mana cost and use interval for a power like that are quite large because you can use it on other people. That's a valuable power. Belinda's next racial gift evolution soon triggered. Human racial ability, Essence Gift, has evolved into the price of power. Ability, the price of power. Transfigured from human ability, Essence Gift. Active ability, spell, curse. The subject of this ability suffers disruptive force damage when expanding mana, proportional to the amount of mana consumed. That's interesting, Clive said. Active racial gifts are incredibly rare, especially ones you can use on other people. How is that a trap power? Sophie asked. It turns a person's own mana into a trap, Neil said. It's a nasty ability. I'm glad, Belinda said. The first one wasn't great. Useful, don't get me wrong, but a bit underwhelming. Underwhelming, Jason said. That ability to conjure tools is the most pure-blood adventuring power I've ever seen. I could empty half my storage space if I had that power. You really could, Humphrey said. I will admit, I've been carrying around some useful odds and ends as well, Clive said. Because I had ropes with me, Neil and I have multiple growth items now. Still, two essences to go, Clive said. I'll set up the next ritual. Actually, could we take a break, Belinda asked. This is kind of intense, and I could use a rest. Good idea, Jason said. We can all go up to my suite, and I'll put on some lunch. As everyone shuffled out of the ritual room, Clive asked Sophie and Belinda to stay behind for a moment to discuss an issue with their new abilities. Is there a problem with our abilities, Sophie asked after the others were gone. This isn't really about your abilities, Clive said. It's about Jason. What about him? Sophie asked. I don't like the way you're attacking him, Clive said. Seriously? Sophie asked. I hit him ten times harder when we spar. But you weren't sparring. You don't think he could have stopped me? Jason's judgment is compromised when it comes to you, Clive said. He's wary of his power over you and the men who had power over you in the first place. Because of that... He lets you get away with things he wouldn't tolerate from anyone. Don't forget, he just went through something incredibly affecting. He seemed normal to me, Belinda said. Exactly, Sophie agreed. You saw him, he's fine. Clive gave them a sad smile. You never met Farah, But when Jason and I started adventuring together, she asked me to look out for him. To make sure he was actually fine, it didn't just seem that way. He's good at hiding when he's overwhelmed. That's crap, Sophie said. He's just one of those guys that takes it all in stride. Nothing really affects people like that. People like that don't exist, Clive said. Jason might not have been through all the things you have, but he's had his own challenges. He's more vulnerable now than he seems. Sophie scowled while Belinda looked at her thoughtfully. Maybe we can tone it back a little, she said. You mean I can, Sophie said. Yes, yeah, Soph, Belinda said. I mean you. They reconvened in the ritual room after lunch. Sophie was subdued, her scowl replaced with an unhappy, thoughtful frown as she sh shot glances in Jason's direction. Jason moved over to Clive as he drew the circle for the next ritual. What did you do? Jason asked quietly. I didn't like the way she was treating you. She needed that, Jason said, to know she really is free and wouldn't be pushed back down for acting against the man with the power over her. You think that was a healthy expression of freedom? Clive asked. Of course not, Jason said, but it was a start. And what about what you need, Clive said. You may be putting a good face on it, but I know what happens to people who get that close to that many gods. I've read papers on it. You can't tell me you're fine when I know you are shaken to the very soul, literally. It's fine. The way she's treating you isn't fine. Neil and Humphrey might think she's crabby about some other girl, but they're teenagers and don't know any better. Wexler's damaged, Jason said. We need to give her leeway. Trauma is not an excuse to hurt other people, Clive said. Isn't the whole point for her to take responsibility for her own behavior? This is not how you work through your problems. You can't fix everything at once, Clive. You take the wins you get. You aren't a reliable judge when it comes to her. You're so scared of abusing the power that that indenture contract gives you that you won't act when you should. But that's all right. You have friends to help you, and so does she. Let's let us both keep let us keep both of you walking in straight lines. Jason glanced over at Sophie, then nodded. All right, Clive, Jason said. Thanks, mate.
And that's the end of chapter 67. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have fun, guys.